All right, so for part B, at what value of x does f attain an absolute minimum from negative 1 to 5? At what value of x does f attain an absolute maximum from negative 1 to 5? And show the analysis that leads to your answers. So this one ends up being worth four points. Um, one point for the minimum, one point for the maximum, and then one point for each explanation. Well, let's look at what we've got here. This is the graph of the derivative, so this is tell us, tells us what's going on with the original function, if it's increasing or decreasing. And I think most of us are a little bit more comfortable looking at the first derivative on the number line. So when is the first derivative zero, according to this graph? <laughs> one and four, right? So at one and four, the derivative is equal to zero. So to the left of one, is the derivative positive or negative? Negative, right? Remember, this is the graph of the derivative. So the y value represents the derivative. So the y value is negative there. Then from 1 to 4, the y value is negative again. So that means the derivative is negative. And then from 4 to 5, y value is positive, so the derivative of f is positive. So the graph of f is going to be decreasing, then 0, slope of 0, then decreasing, and then increasing. So we're going to have a graph that's going to be down, kind of flatten out a little bit, go down, and then go up. Well, what kind of a point do we have here at 4? Local min, right? But we're looking for the absolute minimum. According to what we see here, that's going to be an absolute minimum too, right? If we start here, we're decreasing all the way to 4, and then we increase, there's no chance that anything else can be the absolute minimum, right? Not even the endpoints. It wouldn't make sense for those to be an absolute minimum. So for part B, right, there is an absolute minimum. at x equals 4 because f decreases from negative 1 to 4 and increases from 4 to 5. Right, so there's our two points for the absolute minimum. We know what it is, and we explain why. Now, absolute maximum is a little bit tougher to explain. But if we're looking at this, and don't necessarily use my picture to answer your question, but what is what do you think the absolute maximum is going to be? It's got to be one of the endpoints, right? Which one do you think it's going to be? Negative 1, probably because you're looking at my graph. But let's look at this graph and kind of figure out why would it be negative 1. Because negative 1 is correct, but we have to kind of back it up with a little bit of math. <laughs> How do we know this point's going to be higher than this one? What's up? 3 is bigger than 2. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but thanks for sharing. All right. So if we look at this, look at the area of this graph. If we go from negative 1 to 5, what's the area under the curve going to be? So if we were talking about the definite integral from negative 1 to 5 of the derivative You think that's going to be positive or negative? negative? Negative, right? There's more of the graph that's below the x-axis than there is above it. So it makes sense that this would be true, right? Well, here's where you get a little math magic for our explanation. If we were to do the definite integral from negative 1 to 5 of the derivative of f of x, well, 
Well, what's the antiderivative of the derivative of f of x? Well, it would be f of x. Right? The antiderivative of the derivative would be f of x, and we'd evaluate that from negative 1 to 5. So that means we'd have f of 5 minus f of negative 1. Well, we said that um, this was less than 0, right? Right, this area was less than zero because more of it's underneath. Well, what if we kind of move some things around on this inequality? That would mean that f of 5 would be less than f of negative 1, right? If we just added that to the other side, well, right there, that tells us f of negative 1 is bigger than f of 5. So our endpoint over here is going to be bigger than the endpoint on the other side. So a little calculus to kind of back up what we already kind of thought was true. So for the rest of part B, F has an absolute maximum at X equals negative 1. Because the absolute max has to be one of the endpoints. All right, it has to be an endpoint. The area under the curve, so let's just instead of saying area under the curve, um, the definite integral from negative 1 to 5 of the derivative of f of x dx has to be less than 0. Because most of the area is negative. And then that would mean that f of 5 minus f of negative 1 is less than 0. And f of 5 is less than f of negative 1. 